Hello YouTube, welcome to the Fake Milk Character Study Part 13. Now in my culture, the number 13 has a certain meaning attached to it. I don't know what they say down in Texas, in Texan culture, but in France we say that it's either a very unlucky number or a lucky number. And I think that today we're going to prove that for us, the ment addicts, it's actually a good omen. So I'm coming at you today with new information, with new data that I collected, and with promises, promises of good things to come. Because I actually have managed to gather enough info to make two big episodes on Bloho's dating life and Bloho's sexual orientation, which way he goes, what are his preferences. I actually uncovered certain things that are going to give us a clear answer down the line. A lot of fun stuff too, because I'm going to come at you with messages that Bloho sent to women in an effort to woo them, some private messages that he sent to what he thought were women, and you will see that we are about to receive a, a lesson on romance and seduction that has never been uncovered by this wood. Kof has been in seduction for five years, guys. He knows how to get the ladies. He knows how to get their panties wet. He has all of the tactics, all of the right words. He's a poet. He's an artist of his craft. And I'm going to share all of that with you and hope that you don't break a rib laughing at the ridiculous stuff that he writes, hoping to get in these people's pants. Some of those pants being my pants, Bloho, because yes, you've been talking to me, hiding behind a catfish profile. Surprise, surprise. On top of that, it's happened several times. You still haven't caught on that it's me behind those accounts. I understand why he's completely desperate for tell, but I'm going to give you all of that soon. For today, I just want you to I just want to give you a tiny bit, just enough to keep you hydrated with this heat that's hitting us right now. I don't want you to go bone dry, and a tiny amount of meds is going to keep you going and lasting long enough so that I can actually get at you with those fresh episodes. So for today, I want to revisit the relationship that Blow has with certain figures of YouTube fitness. Some certified and bonified YouTube salaries like Affinex, like uh, Rich Piana, the Hodge Twins, etc. And all of the nonsense that Bloho spouted throughout the years about these people and the resentment he holds towards them. But first, as promised, let's revisit some of the messages that Bloho sent in the last month. What has he been up to? Well, first off, I can tell you that the last video really pissed him off. First, because if you check the video and you look at the sock account, he went completely bananas. And secondly, because he had a long rant and tirade about the video. He never mentioned it directly, but he actually went towards certain friends and complained, always in his weird undercover way, where some people asked him why he was feeling upset after he posted a, a, private, po a private message on his uh, Facebook wall. And he answered that, People on the internet were being stupid and calling him a 5'3", short, ugly, stinky, weak man, which, good job, Bloho, you're summarizing most of what I'm saying about you. And that really got to him. And I can tell every single time that he gets these videos in his feeds, that he watches them several times, and that it kills his mood, because afterwards, you can see it in his uploads, he's almost at the verge of tears, which means that what I'm doing is working. You need to realize that what you're doing is wrong and you need to apologize, Bloho. I'm going to continue give you, to give you that, that little tinge, that little reminder of what you've done. But that's something that he vented on his Facebook about. Trying to get out of that, you know, in a winning position, it didn't work. Uh, the people that you're talking to just don't know the uh, reach and just the range of what you've done. But it's about to change because you are really bad at protecting your identity. You continuously try to, you know, show off the few things you have in your life, then try to fall back and say that you're protecting your, annu your annuality. That doesn't work anymore. And those people that you're chatting with that have no idea of what you, you've done, they're being contacted, all of them. So you're going to start seeing more and more people ignoring you as they should. And to really harp and really focus more on this entire data thing, a lot of that comes actually from Facebook, be it private groups or private messages. And the private group that Kof is a member of, a lot of people on the, under these videos, under the comments, know what I'm talking about. It's a, it's a private Facebook page that is dedicated to strength. And I have noticed a very dangerous trend. One, because 
Jason goes on that page to get some, uh, some attention from people because that's the only type of attention he can get. He hunts women on these pages, which is where I got most of the message from because he continuously tries to flirt with the ladies on these pages for some reason, thinking it's going to get him some action. He also hunts for clients, all of which he selects because they're young. And that's something I'm going to get into as well because I have an update for the client thing. But that was sort of the, the message thing and uh, the, the, the cope that he's trying to put in, in place to uh, reject some of the things that I've said about him in the pre previous video. And again, a reminder that if he wanted to prove his height, he could just go to a gas station and get himself measured and there would be no doubt. The reason why he hasn't done it is a proof that he's lying. Same for the fake plates. Why doesn't he just weight all of his plates? Because they're fake. Never trust that guy. He always lies. So for the client update, I have sort of hinted at this the last time. I've been actually running an investigation on the matter. And it has been going well, at least to prove what I expected and what I believe, which is he doesn't really run any type of service and he doesn't really coach people for one simple reason. To this day, I have created a number of fake accounts and I have created a number of profiles to try and get what he calls a consolation, which it's consultation, but he still to this day says consolation. It, it might just be a freudian slip because deep down he wants people to console him. I don't know, but I've desperately tried to reach out to him to no avail. And at first I thought that maybe he was onto me and he knew it was me, but therefore I'm fully certain that there's no way in the world that he could tell it was me. So that left me with one explanation. He doesn't really run a coaching service because what coach wouldn't want and try to have new clients. And this is when everything fell into place in my brain. I finally understood. He continuously says that he has spots open for coaching and you might wonder, okay, that would only be, you know, something that works and that is effective if you have so many demands that there are, there's a queue. But in reality, think about that. How many coaches on YouTube fitness refuse clients? Most coaches, most big pages on this platform struggle to get and secure clients. So how would that make any sense that this guy with no visibility, no credentials, get 25 clients when some guys who have literal PhDs barely get 15. And on top of that, any good coach would just write down the information of the person, put them in a queue and then give them their spot whenever it's needed. He doesn't. He just says, oh, just check out, check with me next time. That doesn't make sense. And as I said last time, whenever he posts those messages about spots being open, no one answers. And then when I check the private messages, no one reaches out and he doesn't communicate with anyone. So that's a hoax. It's a lie. It's a facade. He's just trying to pretend that something is happening behind closed doors, but nothing is. Because I can tell you that I created more than 26 accounts to reach out. I never got an answer from that guy. And it's not like he could check my IP. I changed IPs. And I even got people that are not me on different devices, different identities to try and reach out and no one got an answer. And then, then you're going to tell me and you're going to ask, okay, so does he have no clients? No, he has a few clients. But the way he scores them is interesting because he tries to pretend he gets them through his uh, advertising on YouTube, which is nonsense, or that he gets them because people reach out, which is also untrue. The way he scores clients is he hunts them, and I use the verb hunting seriously, on Facebook and YouTube. Because in reality, the only clients he accepts are those that he can verify their identity. So he only accepts people that he, that he can see on the YouTube channel. And then afterwards, these people post their footage on the YouTube channel. And guess what? They're all young or they have some sort of developmental disability. And it's the reason why also it's so sad to see them being plastered on his channel because he's making money off of the back of people he's already abusing and, you know, just uh, scamming. He's already taking their money. And a lot of people have pointed out that the guy that he has a, a hard on for, the Mikey guy, looks to have a disability. So if he does, it's really sad to hear. And the people who take care of him is wranglers need to just, you know, take him away from that bad influence. And on top of that, it's true that he also looks a lot like Bloho. I don't know why. A part of me was thinking that he was trolling him because how is it possible that he, he owns the same women's shirts, he has the same body type, he has the same bald head, the same glasses. 
This looked like an advanced troll. I was almost certain that this guy was a troll. Apparently, he isn't. And a lot of the people that actually give money to Kof just end up being people who are even dumber than he is. Which is the reason why he has so, many, so few clients, by the way, is because it's tough to find that type of people. But it's easier when they're teenagers. And on his Facebook, on the Facebook page about the strength coaching, etc., he's been continuously doing that. I have spotted him several times reaching out to teenagers. And he makes the first step, just like he did with that Joey kid, where he made several videos to get his attention, to get then secure his, uh, his uh, person as a potential client. He does the same on Facebook and on YouTube. He's constantly on the prowl. It's the reason why he needs to get banned from that Facebook page. It's because he's dangerous. He's both harassing women and he's hunting kids. That's two things. That's two strikes you're out. And on top of that, the advice and the regiments he has those kids on blows the mind. Because I actually had one reach out to me. A guy who was with Bloho for one month, then smelled that something was wrong and left. And he sent me some of those messages, some of which are also acquired by different means. The ones I acquired by different means showed that he was recommending that teenagers stop eating vegetables, replace vegetables by orange juice. He also recommended that they add butter to every single one of their dish, that they add oil every single time they could in their dish, and that they drank a gallon of milk a day. So he's basically trying to turn every teenager on this planet into himself. It's the reason why that guy, that Mikey guy, looks like mini-me, or maxi-me, because Koth is 5'3". So if you're anything above 5'5", five five, you're maxi me him. But it's, it's, the, it's the end goal, right? Think about it. If he manages to make every single male look like him, he finally gets a chance at girls, because he's finally going to be above average. For once in his life, he's going to be above average. Of course, it's not going to work, because just like the guy who reached out to me, one month of this diet, the guy got bad acne, he got overweight, and he just said, you know what, screw it, I just got scammed, and he left. And it's the reason why also Bloho doesn't have clients, because I have had several people reach out to me afterwards and send me messages telling me, hey, I actually paid that guy for a while, and a lot more are going to come because a lot more are going to realize that he is just a complete idiot. But some of the messages I have, I save from these clients, and I'm just going to read them out loud, to, out loud to you at some point. Some I'm saving because some of these people are still being coached by him and feeding me information. I'm not going to say which ones, that way Bloho can be a little bit paranoid about which of his clients are actually betraying him. But let me read to you a portion of what one of his clients told me via private messages. So this is a, a I'm paraphrasing what he's saying, okay? He told me that he was a really weird person, that the first Skype call, because he has Skype calls with people he verifies beforehand, went okay, that he was actually normal. But then when he started actually speaking to him weekly, he was, um, what is the term he used? I didn't write it down. He didn't say bizarre, but he used the term like uh, volatile. His mood was all over the place pretty much. And the t certain terms were constantly reused as if he had a, a small vocabulary. So, for example, he particularly liked to say higher than giraffe's pussy to talk about squats. Apparently, he thinks it's a funny joke. He constantly also apparently made references about females being in the vicinity. So several times, apparently, Kof would take a break from the Skype call and pretend that a woman was there. Or he would say, oh, yes, please bring me this to an apparent woman in the room. And the person told me that it sounded really fake. Like it sounded like no one was there and was just pretending. That person that sent me that message was 16. Meaning that Kof is flexing on teenagers about the amount of girls he can get. That is really sad. But the message continued because there was also a real problem with the quality of the information being sent. Uh, in the sense that he, he apparently sent him Excel sheets. And those were all over the place too. It was really poorly formatted. Apparently there was typos everywhere. And he also realized one thing. He realized with my help that the Excel sheet he was being sent was the exact same one that Blow sends his, uh, his very small amount of clients. So he's basically so lazy that the few people he managed to get his hands on, he can't even be a little bit original with them. He just refeeds them the same bullshit. 
And the quality of these programs, of course, suck because we're talking about the man who made Ice Cream Fitness, which I, I discovered recently, I didn't realize, Ice Cream Fitness is a play on wood. It's supposed to mean Ice Cream Fitness. And Blo is extremely proud of that. One of the things that I saw the most in his private messages was when he's responding directly to people who talk about his novice program from back in the day, and he constantly likes to plug that, that it's the, the name, and he thinks it's real funny. I've always found it was Ice Cream Fitness because he's a fat ass. You learn new things every single day. So that's that for the client thing, the client thing that I'm going to keep revisiting because I'm continuously trying to get in contact with him. Kof, I, I just want to get coached by you. I want to be big and strong and thick like you. Why, why can't you just accept me as a disciple? I want to go pork mode as well. Isn't, is it too much to ask? Is it because I'm French? Are you discriminating because I'm French? If anyone can get in contact with Kof, I'm, I'm ready to pay him eight bucks to have his services because of course, he's a world renowned strength Kof. He, his services cannot be valued. So that's that for this little portion here. The, the replacing vegetables by orange juice still blows my mind. Who would take dietary advice from that guy? He eats garbage day in and day out. He's going to die in five years. And just to end with something a little bit uh, funny and whimsical, he, of course, detested the fact that Alpha Destiny managed to bench 400 pounds when he still struggles to get three plates at the overweight 240 pounds he is. And therefore, he claimed that Alex is not natural, he's lying to his audience. He also claimed that Omar Izov, Omar Izov, the poster boy for natural bodies, is also not natural. And he's saying that in both cases because both these guys look tremendously better than he does and they're both much stronger than he is. And also, and I don't know if Alex watches these videos or not, but Alex, I don't know if you are warming up to Bloho or if it's just a strategy on your part. Keep in mind he's completely shitting on you in his comments. He might not make videos about you, but he's still shitting on you in his comments, calling you a manlet, calling you an incel, saying you're five feet tall, which is his actual height, and saying that you're on steroids. So keep that in mind. He's a piece of shit through and through. So that's that for this little segment. Now, let's get into the actual bulk of the mints because in my little piece of paper here, I have some juicy stuff for you. So as I said for today, we're going to talk about Aflinex. And the reason why I'm bringing Jeff into this character study is because one, he fits right in because he's a fraud and a shitty person himself. And also because... If there is one person that Blow hates more than anyone else, it's him. For multiple reasons. But it's always interesting to see Bloho's ability to detect lies and to detect fraudulent behavior in others. Because real recognizes real. And fake also recognizes fake. And a lot of people have told me, oh, but Bloho doesn't like uh, Greg Doucette or Affinex and he was right. They're bad people. Yeah, but keep in mind that a broken cock is right two times a day. Just because he hates someone doesn't make him good or intelligent. It's just that he hates on everyone. There's a few individuals that don't get to be detested by that pig. And it's because he's trying to get advantage from that. He's trying to get something from them. The second he realizes he cannot manipulate you into giving him what he wants, he hates you by default. Because he's following the old adage of if they're smaller than me, they suck. If they are bigger than me, they're on steroids. And since everyone on this planet is bigger than Kof, even toddlers, therefore he hates everyone. So he hates Jeff. And a lot of that can be linked to psychology and to things that he's trying to hide about himself. Because Cavalier, even if you detest him, has actually managed to build an empire. He's the biggest page on this platform. And keep in mind that if you look back, he started around Kof, meaning that they were around during the same time. One managed to have a, cha a channel with 10 million subs, makes millions of dollars every year. The other one barely scraps by every single month, has to lie about where his money comes from because he's on welfare, has no teeth, has no wife, has no family, killed the one thing that loved him unconditionally, which is his dog. And you look at that and you realize, wow, he really fucked it up, didn't he? He couldn't even get one hundredth of what, of what Jeff Waff. It's the dog. It's Nova trying to reincarnate itself through me to get its vengeance. He didn't manage to get one tenth of what Jeff actually managed to accomplish. And that's why he detests him so much is he looks, he looks back and he thinks, man, 
I could have had that. I could have had all of these things. And these things include, of course, the massive mansion that Cavalier, Cavalier has, whereas Bloho has a literal box that he squats and eats on, which is, again, disgusting. That's why you put your buttocks on, for God's sake. This is not sanitary at all. And he, it's just a completely different lifestyle altogether. He, didn't, he doesn't even have a car. He doesn't even have a car. He's taking the bus. Do you think Jeff Cavalier takes the bus? I don't think so. On top of that, there's also the difference in physique because Jeff is a fitness mogul. He has the money, he has the family, but he also has a, a respectable physique. And regardless of if you believe he's on drugs or not, keep in mind that Bloho is on drugs, certified. And look at the way he looks. I don't know what drug he's taking. I think he's pulling a Genova. Genova is the one and only reverse fake Nally because, of course, when Jason Genova approaches a dealer to get steroids, the dealer is not going to sell him steroids because he's clearly able to tell that that person is retarded. So he's giving you anything. He's giving you salty water to inject into your veins or whatever. Anything so that you can't actually hurt yourself. I think Blow is the same, but it's because he's too stupid. He might have been trying to get some, some juice and gear from the dark market, and some guy in China somewhere just realized that he had a perfect opportunity to just make easy money. And they've been, I don't know, sending him whatever they can find and making their bathtubs. Because it's clearly not working. Jason, how many years have you been injecting those substances in your veins? It's not working. Call it quits. I don't know. Do a juice instead. Do like Jeff. Eat only one carrot pie a year. Try anything else. But this is not working. Try any type of supplement. Try to mix creatine with any substance and inject that. Clearly, your body doesn't respond to whatever gear you're putting in. It's not worth it at all. Just fix your teeth instead. So that's, that's the, the, the comparison between the two. And this is the reason why, if you look at his channel, Jeff has been a target. And Bloho has made, I think, like 20 videos about him. He hates him more than he hates Alpha Destiny, which is saying a lot. And all of the videos are the same, pretty much. He's calling Jeff weak and he's calling him a pussy because he's weak. But if you think about it, look at Bloho's height and at, his, and at his weight. And look at Jeff's height. Jeff is much taller than Bloho. He is also much lighter than him. I think he's, he might be lighter by, some, by something like 70 or 80 pounds. What do you think would happen if Bloho actually cut down and went down to a weight that is suitable for his frame? He would be just as weak as Jeff. He wouldn't have all of that weight to use as leverage against the weight. So therefore, he would be just as weak. Now, do you think he would look as good? I don't think so. We've seen what Jason looks like on a cut. He looks terrible. And therefore, he's stuck in an endless purgatory of sorts. He understands that he cannot cut down or else he would be even weaker than he is right now. But he also detests the way he looks. That's the, way, that's the reason why he's constantly yo-yo dieting. And he hates some people who look good. That is the crux of the reason why he hates Cavalier. It's not because Cavalier doesn't know what he's talking about, also, although that's true, because Bloho also doesn't know what he's talking about. If you want to have a good laugh, go back and look at the videos where Bloho is discussing athletic, athletic training and compare it to actual credential, credentialed people who speak about the same topic. It would blow your mind how little he knows. And of course, how could he know anything about athletics? He is the least athletic person on earth. He hurts his shoulders doing pull-ups because he's overweight, he's obese. When he's waiting for the bus to take him to Costco, when he sees the bus run by, do you think he runs after it? I don't think so. I think he's fairly aware that he would risk a heart attack here and there. He just waits for the next bus like a good cock. He's not running. That guy cannot potentially or possibly run. And so it's always crazy to see him give advice to people who actually do sports. Don't take advice from a guy who can barely catch his breath speaking into a mic. That is terrible juju. Don't do that. And if you look back, there's also the repossession of some of Jeff's catchphrases that Bro is trying to pass down as being sarcastic. Look at his titles now. He's currently trying to use the catchphrase of killing your gains. Why is he doing that? Why is the fat cock doing that? Well, for one reason, he's trying to get traffic away from Jeff. Of course, if Blow kept attention and paid attention to YouTube, he would realize that that doesn't work anymore. They fixed that a long time ago. But he still does it. And if you ask him, he would say it's to make fun of him. But that's nonsense. He's just trying to get views. And therefore, he'll do anything to get views. And it's, uh, it's a process we've seen times and times again. For the people who don't realize, 
the weird eyebrow thing he does at the start of his videos, which one is extremely cringy, comes from The Rock. It's a performance act that The Rock used to do in his wrestling days. Because on him, when you're an actual 6 feet 6 plus Samoan guy built like a monster, it works because it's actually cool. When Bloho does it, I'd have to resist the urge to call the police and to report him as a sexual predator because it's just infuriating and creepy. Bro, I, I've seen the way you try to get women. I hope you don't wink at them or you don't do that eyebrow thing at them in public because I can tell you that your picture is being plastered as we speak everywhere with the mentioned sexual predator underneath and it would be well deserved. By the way, just as, a, as, an, as, an, as an aside, I think you say that in English, yes? It happened in the past, meaning that some people actually make placards of Bloho's face and they put that wherever they could around his house. And I can tell you for a fact from message, messages I got from the past that this is one of the things that scared him the most and made him the most upset. Just saying, same for the Facebook page, I know for a fact that it's the last connection he has with humanity. Meaning that if we could manage to get him out of that page, it would actually deal a non-negligible blow. Again, just saying, I'm not telling you to do anything. So that's the Jeff Cavalier story. The story that also goes back and forth because it's always funny to see how detested Bloho is by the entirety of YouTube Fitness. Alex, Omar, Jeff Nippert, Jeff Cavalier all have taken digs at him. My favorites being by Jeff Nippert. I mean, I like Jeff. He's nice, but he's also a bit devilish. You can tell that he's a, little, he's a little bit of a shithead too, because his trolls were always the most subtle, but the most devastating. My favorite one being one where he actually filmed himself sleeping, and when he gets up, there's a picture of Bloho on his pillow. Top one, favorite top one. But it also speaks to the resentment that all of these people have, because keep in mind that there was a time period in 2016-17 well, Bro would make daily videos about these people, meaning that these people couldn't make a single segment or say a single phrase without Bro trying to make money out of that. And he stopped eventually because YouTube told him to stop, which I also verified, by the way. It's certified now. The reason why he's not making those drama videos anymore is not because he became Christian, it's because YouTube actually threatened to shut down his channel is the reason why he stopped. And it's the reason why he also is very careful with the copyright strikes that he actually puts out nowadays is also the reason why I don't have to worry about making those videos too. It's a topic I'll touch later because it's an interesting dive into his personality. He only stopped being a piece of shit because he was forced. If he could go back to these days, he would. And nowadays he's trying. He's trying to make these videos again to see where YouTube stands because of course, YouTube has bigger fish to fry. I said fish, not pig. So that's the Jeff thing. Jeff actually took one dig at Bloho, I think, when he made a video where he included the mention non-negotiable. And some people say it was just random. I don't think it was random. I think that Jeff just hates Bloho because Bloho actually took a dig and attacked and insulted uh, that guy that lives with Jeff, whose name I forgot, Jesse, I think, who has a, a disease or some wasting disease. A, a guy an overweight guy who at the time was 2017 was obese so fat that he had like this thick of a neck roll in the back of his head who was for the most part incapable of moving people thought he was on a wheelchair this is the wheelchair era where blow got so fat that he could barely move and people knew that he didn't go to the gym anymore because of his bulk this guy this version of a human being took a dig at a man that actually worked out and got lean and got actually fairly shredded who had the disease, an actual disease, not a made up one. That's how much of a weasel Bloho is. He has no self-awareness, he has no shame. It's the reason why he needs to be checked. You constantly need to check him or else it gets to his head and he goes out of control. Always remind yourself, Bloho, that you are human garbage. And all of the people you spoke about, even the ones that are not really the best, honest, Caring people like Jeff are still better than you. I can't cite a single person into fitness that is worse than you. And that's saying a lot because YouTube fitness is a heaping pile of hot mess. So, so that's all the Jeff thing. Now, if we're going to talk about other big fitness YouTubers that had a little bit of a, of a falling down with Bloho, we can also talk about uh, LG Intensity. 
That's actually something that I wanted to keep for the video about racism because a lot of that was motivated by the hate that Blow has for Asian people. But I just want to mention here that Elgin was someone who called Bloho a friend at some point and Bloho archived a lot of their private messages and used that as a weapon while Elgin and when Elgin actually realized how bad of a person he was. Well, guess what, Bloho? Karma comes around because now I'm the one who's archiving all of your messages and I'm going to use them against you. Karma's a bitch. So that's that. We can also talk about... People like Serge Nubre, Jeff Side, Rich, the Hodge Twins, and Ryback. All people that Bro decided to talk about all for the same reason. He tried to say at some point or the other that he was bigger than them. And that should already blow the mind because some of the names I cited here are big motherfuckers. And you could think to yourself, okay, Bro can pretend to be bigger than the average person. He can say that he's the monster compared to a normie. But compared to someone who's actually on juice and a pro bodybuilder, how is that possible? Well, it's called being delusional. It's called actually trying to pull, put lies out there that are so big that they dwarf even the fat cuck himself. So if we're going to go and look at each person individually, we're going to talk about Serge Nubre first because that's the biggest meme, right? It's bigger than Serge. And that came directly from a video of Bloho that's still available out there. By the way, there's a person that managed to get all of his videos from the start of the channel. And if you ask in the comment, that person will actually give you the link. No worries about, uh, about uh, Jason knowing and deleting those videos. He cannot touch them. So you can just link the channel, no problem. The certain brief video was a video where Bloho was standing in front of the camera, looking fat, of course. And he was trying to say that if you plugged him, at a certain body fat, he would be bigger than Serge Nubre, which one, nice make-believe would blow a hole, you're still 35% body fat and obese, and two, you could cut down to 1% body fat with the same mass you have, and you would still get mugged by Serge. Are you kidding me? Look at yourself. Have you seen your body recently? If you don't have a mirror in your house, go to your local zoo, look at the sea lion. That's you. That's you with less IQ points because the sea lion runs circles around you. It gets higher... Higher tests on every single, higher scores on every single test that is being put through. Guaranteed. He, so he said that about Serge Dubray, which blows the mind, of course. He also tried to claim in a later video that he had a small waist. I think it's because people came and said, yeah, I mean, you're not bigger than Serge, but on top of that, look at your waist. Look at your fat hips. He had a tiny waist. That's why he looks so good. And he, his answer was to try and reverse psychology on these people and say, oh, I actually have a very small waist. His exact words were a relatively small waist. Again, he could have quintuplets and not even fill it. He could just sneeze and have the babies and not even fill it. He has larger hips than 99% of women. I mean, I know that Mark Stubing has, as an endeavor, the pursuit of dr the, the drag queen industry and dressing as a woman, but... You dress up Bloho as a woman and you make him actually walk the streets of certain cities, he would make money that way. Bloho, stop about the LARPing, the co thing, the YouTube videos where you make no money. Just put on a wig. Run those streets. You're going to make some happy clients for once in your life. Some people are into that. If you actually go down to Florida, Big Lenny would be interested, I think. You're, you're a little bit too pale for him, so maybe tan a little bit first. But, you know, your BBW, that's all he likes. That's, that's good money that you could be making and you actually, you know, put out some happiness in this life. And hopefully, eventually, some serial killer grabs you, snatch and grabs you, and will rid of you forever. So that's for surgery break. After that, there was the Jeff side. The Jeff side was part of a segment, a Nadi or Not video, where Blow pretended that Jeff side lied about his stats. And he tried to back that up by saying that he met Jeff side at an expo and that he was much bigger than him. I don't like Jeff Side, of course, because he's, he's a fake natty, but bigger than Jeff Side? There's so many Jeffs on YouTube Fitness. Change your names, guys. He is so much smaller than he is. And I think that that comes directly from the fact that Jeff, as much as a little prick that he is, gets women. There's no question around that. And Bluho gets none. And I think he met him at the expo, got mugged, realized that 
the guy actually had charisma and he just felt so resentful that he went home and said, you know what, I'm going to make a 90 or not video. And I think that's the reason why he started making those 90 or not videos. It's resentment. And eventually, of course, because so many people are resentful into fitness, they caught on. But of course, he's not bigger than Jeff and he's not bigger than Serge. And he's certainly not bigger than Rich. Rich Piana, the actual freak monster, the, the human lobster, the man who had so much plastic in his body that he was half human, half candle. Bigger than him. Like the video of Blue claiming he was bigger than Rich was A, I believe, not no, okay, no, never mind. That was Genova. It was before his death. So he didn't actually desecrate his name. But when Rich did a massive cut, Bloho claimed that if you removed Rich arms and pecs, he was actually bigger. First off, Bloho, if you have to literally cut off the limbs of people to mock them, this shows that you're small. And on top of that, even if you remove 99% of, of Rich's mass, he would still mug you. Are you kidding me? Do you see the man? He didn't even look human. He was the Frankenstein monster. You are Frankenstein too, but a version that just never made it out of the shed. You are the prototype that just never stood up. Rich, again, for the people who don't know who Rich Piana is, go look at his videos. They're so uh, up and available. He's dead now. And that truly really shows that there is no justice in this world. We lost Rich and Bloho is still alive. How is that fair? It's not fair. But he was, of course, not bigger than Rich. And I so hope and wished that some god somewhere could arrange a meeting after their life in the afterlife, wherever in hell or heaven, between Rich and Bloho, and Rich gets to slapbox Bloho to oblivion, just like he did to Genova. How much would you pay to see a video of Rich slapping around Jason? It would be a sight to behold. First off, Bloho would, be st would start crying one slap in, and two, he would just get messed up. It would, you would see his fat slobber around. It would be beautiful. It would be art, true poetry. So that's for Rich. After that, we have talked about the Hodge twins. The Hodge twins who nowadays do political stuff, they're not really interesting anymore. But back in the days, they did some sort of entertaining fitness. And th those guys are like big dudes. I think they're 6'2", both massive. And again, Bloho tried to claim he was bigger than them. Like 6'2", compared to guys who's 5'3", yeah, that just doesn't compute, does it? And there's an, uh, a funny testimony of, uh, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was Steve Shaw who said that he met both in person and that the Hodge twins would, of course, completely mug Bloho into oblivion. Keep in mind that all of the people I just cited, Bloho met once, but he never said those things to their face. He uh, Actually, no, he only met Jeff Side. He never met Newbury or Rich. Never met the Hodge twins either, I think. And then the last name is Ryback, which is it's the infamous line. I'm, I think he didn't say he was as big as Ryback. He said that he's almost as big as Ryback, and his excuse was that Ryback is only only taller, and that's the reason why he appears smaller. So the excuse was, oh, it's an illusion. Like, I'm bigger than Ryback, but he just has height on me, so he appears bigger. No, he doesn't just appear bigger. He is bigger. Any name on YouTube Fitness is bigger than you. You get mugged by calisthenic athletes. Like, get real. None of that is working because we actually have eyes. It's, I think he forgets that we have eyes sometimes. Like, he makes videos, and I don't, I don't think he understands what he projects. But he's certainly not projecting the Chad image at all. It's actually quite the opposite. He's the better. You look at the meme of the better guy, you take out the hair, it's him. He fits the template perfectly. So those are names that he claimed to be bigger than, which makes no sense. Because, of course, it's all a lie. And then we're going to quickly go into some of the more delusional claims that he presented throughout the years. One that I particularly like because he's not technically incorrect. And that is when he claims that he is gifted in the chest department. This again is a sentence that, by the way, came back a ton in his discussions with his clients uh, because he continuously tries to discuss his own training when talking to clients. He also does that to other people of the Facebook group, some of which are me, because I constantly try to chat the guy and get information from him. It's tough because he only speaks about himself. He's continuously trying to tell me he's taking trips. I know you're not taking trips, you liar. And one thing that he keeps saying too is that he's gifted in the chest department. Having tits as a male does not equate being gifted in the chest department unless your goal is to breastfeed. And I don't think that's the case. I hope it's not the case. Please tell me it's not the case, Jason. 
Uh, but that's fat. All of that thing, that's fat. We can tell when you look at the way he's built, those are titties. It is not normal to have your nipples be almost lower than your number, than your belly button. This is, this is a clear sign that something is wrong. At this point, he doesn't just have gyno. His entire persona is gyno. His body type is gyno. That's the new body type, the new trendy body type. He also says regularly, do I need more size on my legs or back? No, because of course that idiot is talking to himself, he's arguing with himself. And, uh, oh, something I forgot. Uh, something I've noticed on Facebook and YouTube is that speaking about the thing in the third, uh, speaking in the third person, he regularly creates fake accounts with teenager profile pictures and names and he posts questions to himself or inquiries saying, for example, is Jason coaching teenagers? And then he swoops in and he says, yes, I am coaching teenagers. I am very knowledgeable. The only issue is that he sometimes forgets to switch out of the account and he posts with the same account. Like he's sloppy even at being a fraud. It truly is incredible. But that's where the third person thing comes from because that's something he does a ton. When people ask him about muscular development, he regularly says that what he has on his legs and back is muscle and not fat. Plot twist. If you do this and it jiggles around, it's fat, bloho, right? Do this, okay? If it jiggles, it's fat. It's not muscle. Muscle doesn't jiggle. Give a slap to your thigh. Tell me it doesn't look like cottage cheese, just swimming around like an angry sea. That's fat. Same for your fat and your back. All of that is fat. It's disgusting. Just hide this. Thankfully, he started to hide it more and more. But man, he just is completely delusional and incapable of realizing that he looks like a melting candle. He, he still to this day, by the way, claims to have 18 inches arms, even though they were measured on tape a year and a half ago, they were 13 inches. And that was his good arm, not the other arm, arm that he mangled with his injections. He also claims to have good calf genetics. If you get to the point where your one claim to fame is to have good calves, just, just give up. Like, there's no point. No one cares about calves. It's good to have developed calves, but in terms of muscle groups, no one cares about your calves. This was when Vitruvian Physique, Igor, that little troll that he is, made a video saying that Bloho had a body that said that he was hated by God. And Bloho came back saying, well, your calves, Mr. Genetics, as if him having developed calves meant that he was better and genetically gifted. Keep in mind also that he has big calves because he was obese for 15 years. So the few steps he took each day helped develop his calves. That's not a claim to fame. Because of course he, in reality, when you actually compare what I just said to what we see in real life, gets mugged by non-lifters. And actually there's my, one of my favorite pictures of this He's next to a black guy and you can clearly tell that he's uncomfortable because he's a racist. And the black guy is grabbing a full scoop of his titties. I don't know what was going on in this picture. I have, however, a certain idea because there are some interesting messages I managed to catch between Bloho and certain men on Facebook, some of which include some type of messages that are going to take place. So maybe he liked it, a little bit of action, a little bit of squeezing of the titties. Maybe he got that got his rock going. Who knows? Because of course, he's a manlet who isn't even good at strength and looks small after 20 years in the iron game, which is his claim to fame to spend 20 years lifting, but he looks like he doesn't even lift. So what's the point? And in that, I will end also by saying that that resentment towards these figures I just described comes from a need to be accepted. He wanted to be part of that community so bad, he was willing to do whatever he could to actually get there, and he never managed. He was always rejected. And times and times again, that cycle repeats itself because he's the laughing stock of the entire industry. An industry that he pretends to be fighting against, he's trying to pretend to be a rebel. But keep in mind one thing, a thing that a lot of people have forgotten. There once was a time where Blue was selling supplements. Meaning that he was eventually picked up by some people who couldn't tell that he had a mental issue. And that guy started saying supplements. Yes, that big fat hypocrite who nowadays say that supplements are bullshit is also the same guy that tried to peddle supplements. The same guy that sent death threats to a pregnant woman because her husband was saying supplements that he thought were bullshit also sold bullshit supplements because 
He has no soul, he has no integrity and no morals. When he can make a quick buck, he makes a quick buck. That's it. And the actual uh, website that hired him was Tiger Fitness, which it's not a surprise. I mean, Mark Lobster Liner would, of course, hire that type of individual. Nowadays, they're not in good terms anymore. And something that I partly liked was Steve Shaw admitting afterwards that Bloho's writing was really subpar. There were typos everywhere. And he was actually eventually let go because he just couldn't bring anything of value for the company, which is something you could have told just by looking at the guy. No need to look at his writing. But that also is going to end this video. For today, this is all I have for you guys. I'm going to con continuously make those videos, of course, every Wednesday of each month. And as promised, I will come out with certain men's that are going to be extremely juicy and that are going to be even sweeter because of how long I left them to the side and they ripened nicely for your own entertainment and pleasure. Thank you for watching. Screw Jason. Have a good day.